Okay, so as I said, I'm Vanessa Fairhurst. I'll be talking to you today about Similarity Check. If you have any questions, uh, write them in the chat box and we'll get back to you at the end. So what is Crossref Similarity Check? So Similarity Check is a service that helps editors to prevent plagiarism. To do this, our members are given access to the Turnitin powerful text comparison tool called Authenticate. They can then use this to compare their own manuscripts against a large comparison database of full text academic content. While there are several plagiarism screening tools available, using Authenticate as a Similarity Check member is unique as it creates a symbiotic relationship between content owners and Turnitin. Similarity Check members enjoy cost-effective use of Authenticate because they contribute their own published content into Turnitin's database. This means that as the number of Similarity Check members grow, so too does the size of the content database powering Authenticate. With more content in the database, this means greater peace of mind for editors who are looking to determine a manuscript's originality. Turnitin also provides Similarity Check members of access to additional features, such as enhanced text matches within the document viewer and access to Turnitin's dedicated Similarity Check support team. So what is Authenticate? It's Turnitin's plagiarism detection software. You can use it in your browser or via an API. It's used for text-based screening of manuscripts. As I said, the Turnitin content database is vast. The content is indexed from over a billion web pages, 57 million content items from the Crossref system, and over 100 million items from other content providers, such as publishers like Pearson, or Cengage or EBSCOhost. So how the service works. If you're a Similarity Check member, this will be how it works. You'll sign in to Authenticate. You'll upload a document. A Similarity Check report is then produced. You can compare documents side by side. The editor can then make a decision about whether the similarity that's detected is legitimate or whether there's further investigation required. And when, publishers, uh, when members publish new content, they provide a link to the full text, which Turnitin uses to index the item and add it into their database. So their database is current, constantly expanding and it's always kept up to date. So here's an example of a similarity report. It shows the percentage of text that's similar, the similarity check score, and you can check where the matches are from and click on them for more information. However, the similarity check percentage can be misleading if it's not interpreted properly. Properly, Some texts may be similar, such as properly cited references or standard scientific descriptions. For example, the materials and methods used in an experiment or research, for example. So you can exclude certain sections of text, or you can refine the percentage threshold depending on what it is that you're looking for. Not all publishers use a percentage threshold, um, and it's good practice to check where the matches are coming from rather than taking the score on its own. So another tool that you can use is dot to dot comparison. And this allows users to upload one primary document and compare it against up to five other documents. So if we take this example, which is the Goliath of the Sea, when the upload is complete, a similarity score is generated for the primary document based on that of the similar content found only in the comparison documents you've also uploaded. A full comparison port is also available. It will open the document viewer and it will display the primary document along with a list of comparison documents and their similarity percentages. If one of the comparison documents doesn't include any text that matches the primary document, Authenticate will still display it anyway with a 0% score, allowing users to rule it out of their inspection. The similarity report will be stored securely in the user's folder until they delete it. So this dot to dot comparison is particularly useful for comparing manuscripts to other work that's yet to be published or content that's been published outside of the Authenticate database. As these documents will not be stored in the shared database, they won't affect similarity score of any future submissions. 
primary and comparison documents remain completely private and will not be indexed into the shared Identicate, Identicate content database. So when publishers are running their similarity check, what is it that they're looking for? So they might be looking for poor or missing or incomplete references. These can be easily fixed. They might be looking for things like self-plagiarism or also known as text recycling. This is where somebody uses their own previous work in another context without citing it. Again, this can be fixed and it's often um, an error that someone doesn't realize they need to do. Other more serious things that publishers might be looking for is unattributed use of parts of another person's work without citing it at all, submitting another person's work as their own, or deliberately attempting to mislead or represent their findings. So who is using Similarity Check? At the moment, we're seeing over 1,300 participating CrossRef members and an average of about over 405,000 4, manuscripts screened each month. There's a quite high usage from publishers in Japan, Brazil, South Korea, and Turkey. Um, and we're seeing this increase in usage because publishers are investing more into their plagiarism policies. There are three different stages in which, um, in the submission process, in which publishers might use the minority check. This might be on submission, at some defined point in the review and editorial process, or just prior to acceptance. We've got similarity check members using each of these approaches, and there's a trend towards more screening on submission. So who can join similarity check? Well, it's open to all Crossref publisher members who are in a good standing and who are actively assigning article level DOIs to their content. Members must ensure that they have full text URLs present in at least 90% of their article level DOI metadata across all the members' journal prefixes, if that's applicable. These URLs need to point directly to the full text PDF, HTML, or plain text content. Members must also ensure that these links are included in all future deposits as well. Content then must be indexed and added to the Turnitin database. Indexing is done via as called URLs, and these must be present in your deposit metadata. Crossref will then tell Turnitin precisely what to crawl, pointing only to your DOI identified content. So what are as called URLs? Well, it's a specific crawler friendly link that's used by crawler services to index content. Turnitin needs the as called URL for the content associated with each DOI in order to index your content as part of the similarity check membership agreement. The as called URL points to the location of the full text content either in PDF or HTML, as I said before, associated with the DOI. Even if your as-called URLs are the same as your DOI resource URLs, you see, still need to enter them separately as specific as-called URLs for this service. This allows the service to scan the text against submitted manuscripts, but it does not provide outside reader access to content. For new content, the URL can be included as part of the deposit metadata, and it can be updated easily for existing DOIs. So here's some of the steps on how to join. If you're a Crossref member and you're assigning article level DOIs, then you're eligible to join. You'll follow these steps. You'll review the terms and conditions on the Crossref services page and read through Turnitin's service agreement. You ensure that you have included the full text URLs in at least 90% of your DOI deposits and that Turnitin's IP range will have access to your content. You then complete the online registration form, sign a copy of the service agreement and email it back to Crossref at Turnitin. If you need more information on Turnitin's IP range or how to include full text URLs in your DOI metadata, then you can refer to our Get Started Guide on the website. There's full technical instructions and they will be available on our help site as well. So the costs. There are two fees for Similarity Check. 
There's an annual admin fee that's equal to 20% of your Crossref membership fee. This is payable to Crossref. And there's a much reduced rate per document upload fee, which is paid directly to Turnitin. Um, you can see on the chart that this decreases with bulk uploads. So for the first 2,000 documents per year, you'd pay 75 cents document. And above that, this will decrease. So if you're interested in joining, you can go to crossref.org forward slash services forward slash similarity check and you'll find out more information there, as well as links to the agreement forms and um, other documentation that you might need to review beforehand. If you've got any questions, you can email similaritycheck at crossref.org and we can get back to you there. Also, of course, while you're in this webinar, feel free to ask us any questions that you might have right now. And that is the 